Now, a brief little story. I jumped into Animal Crossing the series at Wild World for the Nintendo DS. That was my most played game on the DS. And then I jumped on to Let's Go to the City, which is also called City Folk. And then I played New Leaf. That is currently my most played 3DS game. I decided to review Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Switch a bit early because I don't want to spoil what's coming. And I played it for three days, so I feel like I am ready to tell you what I think about it so far. This is, like I said, a forever game, so that is also why I bought it digitally, like I said in my last video. If you didn't watch that already, you can go back and watch that. This is a game that follows in real life calendar and in real life times. So that means every day there is something new to do in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm gonna start off with some quick tips and tricks for the game. Okay, the first one is the rock hitting trick. Now you take your shovel and you create two holes, just like I am showing you right now so that you don't get pushed backwards when you're hitting rocks that way you can get everything out of the rock tip number two is collect fish bait in the sand every once in a while you see in the sand that it is sort of like squirting up something yeah dig up the clams in the sand and create fish bait you don't have to do that but i find it convenient when i want to really farm fish in one spot Another starter tip that I think everyone should know about is that you can purchase Nook Miles tickets and with those tickets you can go to new islands, randomly generated islands that you will never visit again and collect resources. So when you run out of things to do in Animal Crossing and you will run out of seemingly things to do in Animal Crossing, you should go to one of the Nook Miles islands, buy a ticket. My fourth tip is that you don't have to be stung by bees. If you hold your net while you're shaking trees, you have actually the time to run a little bit and then turn around and catch the bees before they sting you. And my last tip is that you actually get infinite tree branches from shaking any tree. I have shown that trick to so many people now the past days and they didn't know about it. Now the story this time around in Animal Crossing is that you sign up for an island getaway package with Tom Nook and Timmy and Tommy. Which basically means you and two other random villagers travel to a deserted island where you are now experiencing the full island getaway package. Immediately you have to start paying your mortgage for the tent and for the travel and all of that stuff. But after you have paid that mortgage, you get to upgrade your tent to a house and then you get a new mortgage. And when you have paid down that mortgage, you can increase the size of your house, add a few other rooms if you want to. So one of the main objectives I want to say is to pay your mortgage. So, you know, it has never been more fun to pay your mortgage than in Animal Crossing. Other than that, you can also expand your facilities on this island by doing the main quests, sort of, that you get from Tom Nook himself. Just follow what he says and do what he says, you know. Eventually, you will get to open a museum on the island, a shop, and you will get access to new crafting recipes, including bridges. Eventually there will be moving new townspeople to your town and they have so much dialogue. I love it. I, I love the townspeople in Animal Crossing. There's always been like, I feel sort of connected to them when I've been living with them for, you know, a very long time. And my first two villagers this time around is the penguin Ruald and the horse Rene. Ne. Lol. There's a bunch of returning characters, of course, like Tom Nook, Timmy and Tommy, Blathers in the museum, and also Gulliver, and the Able Sisters, and so many more. Eventually you will meet most characters from the franchise, but you have to unlock certain things, you know, within the, what I call, main quest. But Animal Crossing is very much about that unique gameplay, and it is definitely unlike anything else you have ever played. This is the life simulator. So basically the gameplay in Animal Crossing, because some people are asking me, what do you do in this game? There's no fighting and there doesn't seem to be any experience points and all of that stuff. Well, 
let me tell you. This game is about collecting items and earning money. And the more items you collect, which is what I love to do, actually, I love to collect every piece of item so that I fill out my catalog. So that is a big thing for me anyway. You basically just live your life, collect resources this time around. In this Animal Crossing there is resources and crafting, I will get to that pretty soon. But the entire thing is just a chill, sort of relaxed gameplay style. And you kind of have to experience it for yourself to know what I really mean when I say that because it's its own thing it's so unique and I don't think you have ever played anything like it so the biggest change here is the crafting you will have to collect the resources like woods and rocks and sticks and all sorts of resources and you create your tools which are like the axe a shovel, a net, a fishing rod, etc. And they will also break, so you will eventually have to either upgrade the ones that you have or create new ones. You'll figure that out. There are new items this time around, like the vaulting pole and the ladder. The vaulting pole makes you jump over rivers because you have not gotten the recipe to craft bridges early in the game. But later you will get bridges and later you will get permanent ladders. This game has local and online multiplayer. I am playing this game together with Raimon, my good friend. We have been collecting stuff together, building and figuring this game out together. This is one of the stronger sides of the game, playing together with other people. And today I even played with Katrine Beate. And I have also been flying to other people's islands, including some of my subscribers' islands that have me as a Switch ad because of my Patreon. Because you can add me as a friend when you support me on Patreon. So I have been playing with some of them, actually. <laughs> You collect fish and insects and there are so many fish and so many insects and butterflies and all sorts of like, you know, bees and all sorts of critters. And this is where the museum comes into play because when you find a new species, I think you should donate that to the museum try and fill out the huge museum. In my opinion, I think the museum is too big this time around. Too big and too many separate rooms. But it is fun to walk through a museum when everything is filled out and when you've caught every type of fish and every type of insect, but that is gonna take a sweet time. Because some fishes and some insects are season-based. There are bugs you cannot catch until freaking September. The customization this time around is pretty much like what we are used to from a new leaf. You can customize your character to be a boy or a girl. You can choose the hair color and hairstyle. This time around you can even change up your face, which you couldn't earlier. The eyes and the mouth and the nose. You will also unlock more hair colors and hairstyles eventually. And you can also customize your furniture. <laughs> you know, you can craft furniture, that is one thing, with the resources that you have found. But you can also customize the furniture to be another color so you can really make your home your home and show it off to all your friends you know that sort of thing there are also custom designs which are also called pro patterns and you know you can create your own designs your own sweaters t-shirts dresses hats caps freaking everything with your own designs let that sink in. I want someone to create Isha gaming designs and then come to my island and give them to me. And now this time you can place items outside. We have not seen that before. Probably an idea that they got from Happy Home Designer, which I played on the 3DS. Really good game. Good game. Not as good as mainline Animal Crossing, but really good game. I liked it. So you can create all sorts of, you know, scenery and places outside. Like, I have created a place on the beach. And you know, more things to come. I'm currently building my city the way that I want it. There are also plenty more places and things to do, and that will unlock gradually when you play. The longer you play, the more you will unlock in this game. The game may seem a little, you know, sparse in the beginning, but you will unlock 
all sorts of things in just a matter of a few days actually yeah Inside the houses, it's now easier to move around your items in your house. There are still crossbreeding of flowers and I'm gonna get really into that really soon. There is better storage than before. The storage is way more, you know, appealing on the eyes. It is just better than what I am used to from earlier. So the storage is really good and I filled up my storage on the second day. So this is also a game that I recommend you check in on every day because there are new items in the shop There are new items also in the nook terminal every day and you will get some points for logging in every day The townspeople will also keep you up to date if there are new visitors in your town So talk with them also every day this time you have the nook phone which works exactly like a smartphone where you have the apps like a camera you can take pictures even with filters and you can check out your nook miles which are small tasks that you can do every day and they're so much fun there are five tasks that you can do immediately and the rest of them there are more like the complete progression of your entire game you have the Critterpedia, where you can keep track of every species of fish and insect that you have caught so far. You have your do-it-yourself recipes, DIY recipes. And those are basically just your crafting recipes, which you will collect in the game. You will receive them from your neighbors, find them washed up on the beach in a bottle, or shoot them down from the sky, from the presents hanging from balloons. <laughs> and you can see your passport, where you can actually edit your title. That is a place where you can be really creative. So that is going to show on your passport eventually. You can check out your friend list and you can also add people as best friends. That means when they are at your city visiting you online or local, they get to use their tools in your city and wreak havoc. If you let them be your best friend, they can actually do that. Later in the game you will get terraforming, actually. You can change the directions of rivers and cut down mountains. I have not gotten that far into the game yet, but you can do that. Fruits play a big role in Animal Crossing because there are six different fruits. There are the pear, apple, orange, peach, cherry and coconut. Mm -hmm. I have gotten them all already. But you know, this is only the gameplay section of this review, but I could really go on and on. So let's move on to graphics. I think the graphics are massively improved from New Leaf. It's like night and day with the graphics. It is so incredibly detailed and you can clearly see textures in the fur and on like the clothes and it's so beautiful with like a sort of blur effect when you talk with people the background goes a little blurry and you know the sky and the ocean it's a very colorful happy sort of looking game it's really crisp both on the tv and in handheld i play on tv and when i go to bed i play a bit in bed so i play everywhere Animal Crossing is life at the moment for me. I love the simplistic menu designs. I needed to mention that. However, I think the fonts feel a bit big, but I think they decided to make the fonts really big because this is a series that a lot of older people are also enjoying. Everyone is enjoying Animal Crossing. It's a game for everyone. There are so incredibly many items in this game too. Incredibly many items, love it. The insects and the fish look also very realistic and it's just a gorgeous game. Now, I'm not looking forward to talk about this section of the review, and that is the music. The music in this game drives me insane. I don't like the main music when you are walking around your city. Earlier I have been used to Animal Crossing games having a new tune for every clock hour that is 24 different versions of a sort of like song. But this time around I am sort of surprised to feel that it is the same tune all day, every day, at any time of day. It, it makes me crazy and there's no way to edit that in settings because then I would have turned down the music and just keep sound effects on and voices, but I can't and the, it makes me insane. The music is however really better, actually really better, if you know what I mean, when you travel to islands using the tickets. I actually enjoy the music on those islands, but not on mine. I don't know what to do about that. 
because the music is just too repetitive. It is the same tune, same tune, same tune. Makes me insane. However, the sound effects are detailed and all of that. You can clearly hear when you are walking bare feet on stones and sand and grass. The sound effect is different and there's, you know, it's really detailed. For me, however, I think music is a very important thing in a game of this type. So that is why I, I say, what? But another thing is that I've always enjoyed the way that they talk. My verdict as of right now is that this is as close to my type of game as you can possibly get. This is my type of game. It has always been since the DS era. Wild World, New Leaf. Let's go to the city, which is a really long title for a game. I have always loved Animal Crossing ever since the first day that I decided to buy Wild World in 2006. And they even had online play back then. Another thing I love about Animal Crossing is the socialness and showing off my island to friends and you know. There's also doo-doo codes, but they are temporary for each session. You can post your doo-doo code on Twitter, which I have done a few times, and then you can get random visitors. Visitors. Fun stuff. The drawbacks in this game is that the vaulting pole is really tedious before you get bridges. So I'm just waiting to get more bridges now. I have only gotten one bridge. I'm so tired of the vaulting pole. Also, I feel like the loading screens when someone travels to you and when you travel to their town is too long. You should have been able to do your thing and walk around as they travel to you. Maybe that is something also that they can fix. One thing that is really annoying is that I am a night owl. So when I play this game and really farm fish and insects, you can only sell items in the shipping box outside of the store, which will only give you 80% value at night. And also I feel like there are too many options and it's too complicated to open your gate and to travel to someone. It should have been more streamlined in a list. Other than that, this is a 10 out of 10 game for me. I'm looking forward to collecting all the recipes, upgrading my house to a mansion with a kitchen, a bathroom, and maybe a gaming man cave in the basement. Thank you so much for watching. Follow my Twitter because you need to follow my Twitter. And also you need to subscribe to this channel. And I will see you later. Bye!